Uh, good evening. Um, I would like to call to order the January 24th, 2017, Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Um, the first order of business is to approve the minutes of December 7th, 2016. Um, do we have a lot of people here to do that? We can do it with four. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, um, can I entertain a motion for three? So moved. All in favor? All right. It's approved for to nothing. Uh, we have no old business, so moving right on to the new business. Um, to hear the request of Jeff and Kendra Davis to expand a non-conforming portion of their house by adding a second story addition based on section 19-4-3B4 of the zoning ordinance. The subject property is at 12 Bever Beverly Terrace, map U28, lot 41. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Davis. Can we then give us a little summary of the issues? I mean, sure. All right. Uh, Jeff and Kendra Davis came to me actually many months ago, maybe six or eight months ago at first when they were talking about this project. Basically, it's putting a second story on their house, and they have a relatively small lot, and a portion of the house does not meet the setback requirement. That's basically a second story expansion. Pretty good. Yeah, um, we are yeah building a second story um, above the existing footprint, uh, which is within the setbacks um, on one, the south side of our house. Um, we're looking to expand our family, make our house a little bigger. We currently have one bathroom and kind of two small bedrooms and a third, a third bedroom. Um, so we'd like a few more bedrooms, a second bathroom, and um, yeah. We have approval from our neighbors on both sides. And if you've ever been to that neighborhood, you know many people have done the same thing. Anything to add? Um, we had a survey done. It's included in the application. So you can see um, where the one setback that we would be expanding to is. Um, I think we're almost five feet, and it should be 10. So um, that's the request. I guess. And the propo proposed expansion isn't moving any closer to the setback? No, nope. it's not. Just straight up. Straight up, yeah. right. So, ben, have we heard from the, have we heard from the Foley's or the, the, the butters? There's letters included. Oh, in, in the, the last two pages of the application, there's a letter from the Foley's, which is the one adjacent to that setback. We also have a letter from the other adjacent property um, with their approval of the project. They've seen the plans. Yeah, just the two letters that are included in the package is the only correspondence I received. We've talked with a handful of neighbors, um, you know, just walking around our neighborhood and whatnot. They all seem supportive. Any other questions for the Davises? Okay, so for the front, you're just you're looking to add two, just the two small dormers. Yep, two doghouse dormers in the front and a shed dormer in the back. Shed in the back, and it won't go all the way out; it'll be tucked in. Right. Okay. It will be a little bit, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean the. Yeah, you can see the neighbors, the police have done similar things. Uh, they have shed dorm in the back, and then the other house did a salt box, um, both renovations, I don't know, 10 or 20 years ago. But. Uh, any further questions for the Davises? Thank you. 
Uh, I'd like to open it up now to public comment. I don't see anybody else here. Um, so thus ends the public comment version. Uh, and now open it up to board discussion. According to the, to the ordinance, uh, we're supposed to look at the physical condition and the type of foundation precedent, precedent excuse me, uh, in addition to the criteria in section 19.4. 3B2. Um, those are all addressed, it appears to me, uh, in the application. Uh, the type of foundation is, is indicated and the condition is indicated as being excellent. And then the various factors that we're further to consider are also addressed uh, in the application, including the size of the lot, the slope of the land, potential for soil erosion. Um, location of other structures, the impact on views, and the amount of vegetation to be removed. All of these seem to be, uh, or at least I'm persuaded, that they're within the, the uh, needs of the criteria that are specified in the ordinance. And so um, I'd be prepared to, to uh, move to approve the request uh, in this particular case. I would concur. I mean, the um, expansion is all within the existing footprint of the existing house. It's actually within. It doesn't even go out to the, the outer edge of the existing footprint. So um, I would concur. Um, I'd entertain a motion if anybody has one. Uh, sure. Why don't I uh, uh, move to approve the request of Jeffrey and Kendra Davis to enlarge a non-conforming portion of their house by adding a second story addition. Um, I should have said their house is located at 12 Beverly Terrace, map U28, lot 41. That house uh, would be enlarged by adding a second story addition in accordance with the requirements of section 19-4-3B4 of the zoning ordinance. Second. Uh, all in favor? This is five to nothing. Um, I'm going to read some findings of fact. Uh, Jeffrey and Kendra Davis are the owners of record of, proper, of the property at 12 Beverly Terrace, map U28, lot 41. The subject lot is a non-conforming lot in the RC zone. Additional findings of fact. The Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, the location of other structures on the property and on adjacent properties, the impact on views, and the type and amount of vegetation to be removed to accomplish the relocation. The proposed structure will not increase the nonconformity of the existing structure, and the proposed structure is in compliance with the setback requirements to the greatest practical extent. Uh, all in favor of those findings? Five nothing. Um, and support? No, oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the second order of new business is to hear the request of Andrew Rinaldi to obtain a variance for an addition to his home at 12 Weber, Weybun Road, map U12, lot 24. Uh, ben, you want to introduce this? Sure. I, I began uh, talking to Mr. Rinaldi and Ms. Davis about this project several months ago. Uh, originally, it seemed like this was going to be a non-conforming expansion, that they were going to be holding the setback line on the side. But then when the, when the survey was looked at closely, it, it became known that the house was slightly towards that property line. So, they're getting three or four inches closer to the property line. But, you know, generally speaking, they're, you know, they're holding the, the existing line, and it's really just a couple inches that are causing this to be a variance. Uh, otherwise, we're looking at it under 19.43 B4 right. again. But, uh, but it, 
they are getting three or four inches closer to the property line, which triggers the variance. Based on the way the house is situated on the land? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's just ever so slightly canted in that direction. Okay. Uh, I'll just let me say, I'll say hi yep. first because you're going to yep. do most of the time. But I'm Andrew Rinaldi. Obviously, this is Rachel Conley. She's helping with the design and can speak to some of this for you if you need her to. Obviously, um, so yeah, we're just looking for that variance to go forward in our driveway to extend the house, which does you know kind of angle a little bit towards the uh, property line, and we're looking to do that to expand our house. It's two bedrooms, one and a half bath. And I've got two small boys, so we're looking to just get another bedroom and a bathroom out of that and a two-car garage, which would be uh, a tandem garage because we didn't want to try and go too far closer to the actual property line. I did want to mention that I, I have talked to the immediate neighbors and everybody is supportive. I don't have any letters to that fact, but um, you know, they, they were all in support of what we were doing and he said they'd be you know, more than willing to, to discuss that with you. So. Just wanted to mention that, and I'll hand it over to Rachel for a little bit more detailed explanation. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks, Andy. Um, okay, so I'll be uh, presenting this for um, Kate and Andrew. Uh, so again, they live at 12 Wabin Road in Cape Elizabeth, and their property sits in the RA zone, and it's an existing non-conforming lot. The zoning regulations there require a 25-foot side yard setback. Um, so here is their house. They're, the blue is the existing. The, these are the adjacent um, homeowners. The bright pink here is the proposed addition. The exterior red is the lot, and this interior is um, are the setbacks. And I want to make one correction to the application on page two. It's noted as extending the west elevation, but it's actually the east elevation, which we're extending here. Um, so the scope of the variance request is that we're adding 644 square feet um, master bedroom addition, growing family. They have two bedrooms currently, as Andrew mentioned. Um, so they're looking for a third bedroom. They're also doing a small uh, reorganizing the entry porch as a result of the addition there, and that's 91 uh, square feet. And let's see. Um, oh, I wanted to mention that the lot coverage restrictions in this area, in this zone, are you can maximum 25% of the lot coverage. With a total of the addition, so all the square footage included, it will only come to 16%. Um, and the rear lot, uh, the west side and the front yard setbacks are um, conforming. So it's just this east side. And it will be the master bedroom and then um, garage underneath. So you can look and plan here. Here's the basement plan. Um, so as Andrew said, it's a tandem situation here where we're just extending here. Um, in large part, this was to avoid getting into altering any of the landscaping, um, which includes a mature uh, apple tree. And Ms. Kate, Conley, mm -hmm. could you try to talk, just in case oh, people sorry. watching from sure. if you could pull that a little closer to you. Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> Let's do that. We'll grab okay. that side. We'll Thank you. Thanks. There. All right. Thanks. So, um, and on the on the first floor, so this is the basement floor. On the first level, this is the addition here that's in pink. And um, when you look at the elevation, it's a single story structure, so we're maintaining the ridge line. This is the addition here, and then this is the porch addition here. Um, so keeping in, in keeping with the existing house as well as um, the neighborhood, and this sub plan over here um, gives you a context in terms of the size, scale, and form of the proposal in relationship to existing. So we feel it's in keeping with the existing. Um, as was mentioned, uh, we're seeking the variance because the house was built at a slight angle. It actually, um, the angle actually gets us, it was a couple of inches on an angle from this corner to this corner originally, but by the time we come out there, seven inches, so um, that is 
uh, the reason that we're here. Um, we believe we're a good candidate for this variance because one, the angle of the house is unique, um, practical disadvantage that was not a result of the applicant or a prior owner. Uh, two, the angle also makes the proposal ineligible for the ZBA application B, um, which is Article 4, Section 19.4-3, governing the enlargement of nonconforming buildings and structures, um, as the addition would increase the existing nonconformity. Uh, three, we believe the proposal would be in keeping with the context of the existing neighborhood, as shown above. Um, we have found also that building out rather than up, um, we believe is the most straightforward and cost-effective solution. So to do a second story addition um, starts to get into a, a budget that is uncomfortable for the project. Um, and lastly, the proposed addition will occupy an area um, existing, as I mentioned, that is um, currently a paved area. So we're trying to avoid any of the existing landscaping and trying to keep all the natural landscape elements that are existing in place and intact. So with that, I thank you and open it to questions. Just a, a quick clarification. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned that the ap application, uh, in terms of the statement that the d direction of the setbacks should be reversed from what it actually reads. Yeah, I apologize. So, yeah. So, for, for purposes of, of the record here, the, the current mm -hmm. west setback is 24 feet 5 inches. Is that correct? That's not going to change on the proposal. Correct. But the east uh, side setback, which is currently 20 feet, uh, two and a half inches, mm -hmm. at its minimum, will change to 19 feet 11 inches at its minimum. Correct. Thank you. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, just, just to pick up on that. So the variance you're actually asking for is three and a half inches, not seven, correct? That's correct. Seven is from the mm -hmm. back corner right. of the house. Correct. But the way the statute works, correct. it's the closest point. Correct. Okay. And I have a, a second sort of clarification, I think probably more from you, but where do you measure it from? The edge of the foundation, the siding? Siding. The, root, the siding. A roof roof overhang is exempt. So uh, roof overhang is a bonus. Yep, up to I believe the ordinance says up to two feet for a roof overhang. I'm sorry, you're allowed. Up up to two feet, I believe I think is what the ordinance says for roof overhangs, but siding is where we measure. So extra. Any other questions? Can you clarify a couple of points? Mm -hmm. On my, on the large map, um, it says A2, and there's a, a green perimeter around the property. So the, the, the property line that's in blue is the property line, and then the green one represents the building envelope. Is that correct? So yes, there correct. would be red yes. on that one there. Okay. Yes, the legal building envelope. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm looking at, a, a, the section of the, on the map that says proposed addition, mm -hmm. 644 square feet. So for our purposes, for the board's purposes, it's not 644 square feet that mm. requires a variance. Mm -hmm. What is the square foot that oh, requires okay. the variance? Maybe we can figure that out pretty fast. So I've done some quick math, but. Yeah. Um, so if we have the setback is on one length is 25, 27.5 feet, mm -hmm. that's the length. So how many feet into the drawing would that be, if I, if I have it correct? Looks so I've estimated it seven feet. 
Five feet. Five feet. One inch. How did you get that? The square footage? No, it's the, the front corner is 19 feet, 11 inches. So that's how you determine? From the property line, and the setback's 25. So that corner would be five feet, one inch. I see what you're saying. Into the yes. setback. Mm -hmm. And the other corner is inside, so you could probably call it five, five feet. Five feet by 27.5 would be within a couple square mm -hmm. inches. So roughly, roughly, we're looking at five to six feet is the width, and then length would be 27.5 feet. Correct. Is that correct, Ben? Yeah, there. and that's 137.5 square feet. Okay. Help us to understand why it's important to have this where it is and why it cannot be going to the left mm -hmm. or some other design that would be amenable to a homeowner. Sure. Uh, and why it is a um, desire mm -hmm. to have it where it's currently drawn on the map, mm -hmm. uh, on this uh, plan. Okay, thank you. So with the application were some photographs and I don't have them pinned up here, um, but I, could, I can talk you through them. You'll see that they're, um, and it's shown on the site plan, there is an extensive retaining wall adjacent to the, the existing driveway. <coughs> and do, do you find that in your pictures? Yes. Okay. Can we walk through this together? Yep. So it's the one that's um, flush with the front of the current garage door. Is that the one? Perpendicular that's to the garage door. Okay. Correct. Yes. Uh, and that, that, okay. I'm with you. Yep. So that extends the length of the driveway, and um, and from there, west is um, extensive landscaping. We really wanted to avoid having to remove that retaining wall and rebuild that wall. It was going to be an expense um, that really put be us beyond the budget to rebuild and remove that wall. Is mm -hmm. there? power lines or a sewer line or electrical lines in the ground in that area, or there was a ledge in that section. Is there, a, a, there's on the map, there's an old tree in the front. Yes. But so what you described is aesthetics and cost. Yes. Okay. Could you come up with other suggestions as to why um, does it impact the front door with the flag is? In other words, on the plan, mm -hmm. does that does that doorway stay on the plan? The um, the doorway turns ninety degrees, but the entry, the existing entry, remains where it is. I see. So that current doorway will be part of the new structure. Correct. The door will face yeah. west. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, please. You can just stand up. So we pretty extensively looked at the options for going up, going back, going sideways. We didn't want to go to the right because that brings us right much closer to the neighbor and would require a much greater variance. Going back would require kind of reconditioning the entire exterior and eating up, you know, a big chunk of the yard in the back, which is where the kids play, and that was a big deal for us. Um, and there is a cost implication there too. Similar with going up, um, we would net uh, a second floor, but not a two-car garage, which was really important for us uh, to have a two-car garage, especially with uh, the winters up here and everything like that. We only have the one-car garage right now, and this was really the only other only way to do that other than going expanding wider, which would have put us kind of right on top of the neighbor. and I'm not sure it even would have passed or anything like that. So ultimately, when we considered all those different options, that was this one seemed most practical, feasible, maintain the integrity of the house and the property. It's a, it's a really nice yard if you've ever driven down Waven Road. You know, it, it's really important for us to maintain that kind of neighborhood, uh, the look of the neighborhood without kind of 
changing the look of the house as much as possible, and this was really the best way we found for that to happen. Thank you. So step back from the, your neighbor to the right, um, now or formerly Moss. On the, 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 the survey I have here, is the shaded area that building, their house? Correct. Yes. Okay. So that the the proposed addition, its front face will be actually set back maybe a little bit more from the road than the neighbors is. Correct. Still okay. So it's not sticking out beyond what's on the street. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you explore Rachel any? If you took a notch out on the front, basically, and actually like have like a slightly narrower building of the front to to. Keep that corner within the within the to twenty feet. Yeah, to step out in that that part. We did, mm -hmm. yeah. And um, Andrew, I don't know if you want to make comments about that, but yeah, please. it's hard to see. in this picture. So if we right now there is just enough room to get a car into the garage as is, and basically we're pulling that forward 25, 27 feet. I think you can um, see it well here. If we were to go left, like you were saying, definitely possible. It would require kind of re-landscaping. We'd probably lose the apple tree. It's a couple more feet over, and we would lose about 45 feet of kind of retaining wall that would then also have to be. No, I guess what I'm saying is, if I can't tell from the plan, but how, how wide is um, how wide is the proposed addition? 23.5 feet. Okay. You're, look, you're talking about tandem garage, so you need basically a garage door that's wide enough for a car. Yeah. Which exists now, one does exist now. Oh, I see here, the wall comes further. The, yeah, I, so it's kind of envision bringing that forward. Right, so you're actually taking some of the wall anyway with this. Yeah, we have to take some of it. Um, which is, you know, to me it, it's, it's a cost thing, but it's also a, a, the integrity of the property. I mean, that's really important to us. And, in terms of you know just keeping with what's there, it's a it's a beautiful little house, and we really like mm -hmm. the way that it looks. And the neighborhood, you know, everybody seems to be on the same page with that. So, yeah. um, you know, otherwise we'd be looking at maybe like a horseshoe type deal, and I think you know that would result in something that's not as preferable for for everybody. I think. I'm sure my colleagues will also. Chime in, but we're concerned as to the power upon which the board can act for variance. Mm -hmm. And um, there, we've had applications before us where there's plenty of space. The homeowner didn't want to use that space. And so now we're stuck <laughs> as to what can and be done. Uh, the, the, we're talking about that small sliver of space, um, the 27 by 5 and a half feet. That's the troubling bit. Um, theoretically, you can make it a narrower garage opening. You just have a notch that goes back to the current uh, building. Now, I'm, I have, I'm open to ideas. I'm just letting you know that sure. there's, there's a concern for me whether we have the power to do what you're asking for okay. uh, uh, the variance. Sure. Um, um, so I, I'll leave it at that. I'm just uh, that's my, my my stick point. I just wanted to read the section on variances again to see what else. Uh, yeah, no, I mean I totally understand. That makes sense. If if I understand your point, I'd like to speak to that. Um, if you look at the elevation of the home and you can compare it, I have all the existing conditions also drawn in the set. This is uh, the. Uh, that's eight twelve. The map, right? Correct. The proposed elevation is eight twelve. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This proposed elevation actually reuses the existing garage door. And the section that you see through the sloped ground, the retaining wall, and the driveway, and the garage door are actually exactly in the same location. If we were to come in that distance that we're talking about to avoid extending um, the existing nonconformity, we would be troubled to uh, access that garage. To address the, the issue that we're talking about, uh -huh. the size <laughs> by 20 some odd. Mm -hmm. It's not just moving that portion of the, of the new extension. It, essentially, that's removing the wall, 
to make sure they have enough space to access the garage that mm -hmm. would be there now. So it, it's a two, two or three issue problem. Okay. So it's, it's not just moving over that, the extension to make sure you're not into the setback, although there are reasons why you can get into the setback. Oh. So then to get that extension, that means that retaining wall and some shrubs and the dirt would have to be removed and then probably some paving would have to go where that retaining wall would. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll leave it at that. That's, uh, that's my, okay. my concern is that it, it is possible, I'm not sure that it's aesthetically pleasing, but there is space. Um, and, and I haven't really worked out how it would work and whether that's something you want to do. Um, I'm just, um, I, I have yet to hear my colleagues speak on whether we can, okay. there's other ways to get around this. That's why I'm, I'm concerned. Okay. Well, <clears throat> for what it's worth, I mean, I share my colleague's issue. I mean, it's three and a half inches, so what do we care? Wait a minute, it's three and a half inches? Come on. I mean, I, it's, it's hard to understand why you can't, you know, uh, I don't know, shift the wall on the foundation, as I understand, without compromising anything, or, I mean, that's just not, you have to move a retaining wall? If it's three and a half inches. The car, when you drive into the when you drive into the driveway right now, yeah. literally uh, six inches on the side of the, the wall of, before you actually get into the garage. So it's really close. I don't know if it's I don't know the exact number, but it's really close right now. So essentially, you'd be shifting that whole thing over uh, I don't know a foot or so to be able to do that. And then in doing that, you would lose the retaining wall, you lose the steps, and you would then have a, a sight line that also does not conform to the existing house structure, so it would be stepped in, and, you know, it just, it results in a, a whole lot of extra work, just in, for a few, for, well, you know, a few inches, absolutely. Um, and I think it, I think it, it would affect the visual integrity of the yard, which I, I think is important to the neighbors, that's what I've heard is as long as we're trying to maintain uh, the property as the best we can and not lose the apple tree and not lose some of the nice hardscape and you know add more driveway that's that's the feeling i'm getting for approval on the neighbor side so um you know there certainly are lots of possibilities i absolutely understand that um, yeah i i'm sorry i'm old and feeble i, I don't i don't follow I guess I'm missing why you have to move the apple tree if you move three inches. Well, with, it, with the tandem garage setup, if, if they bump in those four inches, the, the whole garage door, everything has to shift to the left by four inches. And they're, I think what they're saying is, you know, they're tight to the left with the retaining wall. They're kind of, they're tight to everything on the left, so the domino effect of shifting the whole project four inches may be more than meets the eye. Well, also, if you shift it to the left four inches, doesn't it not, it, no, the tandem garage no longer lines up with the, the car behind it? In other words, you're, you're, you're cutting a notch in, now you don't have a straight shot back to the original garage, so the tandem garage doesn't seem to match up. I don't know how that garage would it would would work. That's true. You said before that getting a two-car garage is one of your primary purposes with this project. Did you find you you surveyed the neighborhood mm -hmm. some, right? And what did you find as far as that survey goes? There were um, in the immediate surrounding. Oh, I'm sorry, I keep forgetting. In the, uh, the immediate surrounding, I believe that a majority of the houses all have two-car garages as well, so we're just trying to do you know, more of the same of everybody else. And we kind of looked throughout Shore Acres, and it wasn't a scientific study, but it, you know, at least half, if not more, I would say, had, uh, we, I think we guessed 60, 70% of the ones we drove by had two-car garages. So 
um, we, we felt that that was something that a lot of people had done and we would be doing something similar. <coughs> Had, you, had either of you done the calculation, kind of the plotting it out to where along that setback it crosses the 20 foot mark? Like, basically, if, if you built out from the existing house, how many feet out could you get to before it hits that point? If that front corner is over the line? And isn't the entire thing over the line? Yeah, I think yeah. the, the yeah. Okay. Right. The thing's over the line. Yeah. It's just, you're just coming farther over the line by three and a half inches at no, the think, farthest point. You actually, um, you're at 20, 20 feet, two and a half inches at the front of the existing house. Mm -hmm. And then when you get to the front of proposed addition, it's 19 feet, 11 inches. So at some point in there, it crosses 20. Oh, 25 right. feet is the setback? No, 20 of the con continuing that line. I guess I, I'm, I'm I, confused on the significance of 20. I think it's the setback I believe is 20 25 feet so we're non-conforming already and looking to just extend the existing sight line and in doing so is where we result with the extra you know few inches closer to the property line so it, they would you know they would get closer to that line immediately yeah yeah I guess we've been talking about three inches or four inches over so that's, yeah yeah that is that's more like five feet over well, the, yeah, from from the overall setback, mm -hmm. uh, if, it's already if it it's three and a half inches from being able to be a non-conforming. That's, that's what I'm saying. Is, when, is how 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 far forward can you come with staying within the non-conforming expansion? Zero. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It gradually well, based yeah. on the angle of the house. As soon as you start extending, right. you are you are further encroaching right. into the setback. Right. Yeah. And, and to Ben's point earlier, we didn't you know we did the survey and everything and. We didn't realize that till a little bit later in the game that it actually does angle you know, very slightly towards the uh, toward the uh, neighbor. Okay. Yeah, we we went through all the preliminary work as if assuming this was a non-conforming expansion, and that kind of came up toward the end. You know, looked looked at the survey pretty closely and realized that it was very slightly closer. I have another question. Mm -hmm. um, all of your investigation of the costs and the problems, was that based on three and a half inches or seven? Let me try to figure that out. It's, it's got to be based on seven because if you go three and a half, you can't just go three and a half because three and a half would put you so close to the retaining wall that you wouldn't be able to drive the car in. So you have to go, you would have to go to the seven, I think. So we were assuming that part of it, and that's when we're looking at the cost, and it would require a fairly substantial amount more work and um, change to the yard, actually, to do that. Well, the application said seven, so I assumed all of your investigations had to do with seven. Yep. And now it's like, oh, well, three and a half, we'd have to do seven. I, I missed the segue. The seven is the total sum for which we are looking at, yes. Seven inches. Right. Yep. Because, um, because it, from from this point to this point is seven inches. Right. So to maintain that line is the seven inches. But what you're saying is that from here to here is the three. That's right. Correct. So if it were to come in three inches. Yeah. I, I, yeah, no, I didn't look at that right. in terms of cost. <laughs> so I guess going in three, it's not as simple as if we went in three inches, we, we, it wouldn't work. We couldn't drive a, we could not drive a car into the, the, the actual garage. That's where it becomes. That's, 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 that's uh, maybe I was misunderstanding. I'm sorry mm -hmm. if I was misunderstanding the question. But you, you literally could not drive a car into the garage if you only went that long. Further questions? Thank you. And I don't see anybody uh, for public comment, so I'll open it up to, to board discussion. And I'll go first. I mean, I think that 
where some people seem hung up on is the no other feasible alternative to a variance is available to the petitioner, which is um, D in the petition. But I don't, I don't see, I don't see if there, I don't see any other feasible alternative because they're trying to add a second car to the garage. If you shift it, the garage no longer works as a tandem garage. Even if you shift it, you know, three or four inches this way, it's not a straight shot back any longer. And you, I don't see how you could feasibly get two cars into that garage and then also get in and out of the cars. I, I just don't, I don't see how that would work. I don't see even, you know, cutting a notch into it or shifting the whole thing over three and a half inches. I don't see how that garage works anymore. And that's where I see there is no, there is no other feasible alternative to the proposal. And if it were just living space in that square footage to add, then right. to make an argument, okay, that's back up or whatever. But the, you're right, the garage is a right. Is a to, really to me, it turns factor. on this is a garage. They're trying to add a second garage. Uh, we've heard testimony that that is, um, you know, in conformance with you know other neighborhood homes. Over 50% of them have, um, you know, two car garages, uh, and so to me, I don't see what what the other feasible alternative would would be. So you believe that the primary driver of this application is the garage? It's both. I mean, it, it's, we don't need to look at what the primary okay. driver is. Help me here. Okay. If you have a primary, you have a subsidiary or a secondary. So if you're thinking that the basis of the application is for two-car garage, we have a group variable in the past. Um, well, that's fine. They have not increased the roof line. Uh, so on the second floor where the living space is, right? They're just carrying it forward. Right. So I am agreeing that the application is primarily is for a two-car garage. And I'm content with that. Okay. Right. If anyone disagrees, then you know, I can cause some more difficulties. But I think that, for me, it's a primary application for a garage. And you're, you're following the sidelines for the purposes of aesthetics and the current structure that's already there. Any other discussion or comment? John, just to ask the any comments there? No. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm inclined to, I mean, obviously based on my comments, to approve the request for a variance. Um, I'd entertain a motion. Other people agree. So moved. Uh, anybody second? Second. Uh, any discussion on the motion that's pending? Okay. Um, all in favor? All right. Five nothing. Um, so uh, I guess the, the motion was to um, approve the request of Andrew Rinaldi to obtain a variance for an addition to his home at 12 Weyburn Road, map U12, lot 24. Um, and I'll read some findings of fact. Uh, number one, Andrew and Catherine Rinaldi are the owners of record of the property located at 12 Weyburn Road, map U12, lot 24. Two, the subject property is a non-conforming lot in the RA zone. Three, the zoning ordinance, section 19-4-3A, requires the side setback to be 25 feet. The proposed addition would be 19 feet 11 inches from the side property line. Additional findings of fact. One. Uh, Josh, can I stop sure. you right there? Um, may I offer as an, as an amendment to number three that after the requirement statement of the 25 feet side setback, that we add a statement of fact, an additional statement of fact within that uh, number three to indicate what the current side setback on the east side of the house is, which is 20 feet, two and a half inches. Oh, what I'm trying to get sure, to the but they're the already the encroaching into to, the, yeah. yeah so what, this is really a de minimis kind of a sure. situation. Um, so well, the people going forward, when they are interested in variances, they understand this, this was, so this what, was a five feet away to register. So, so I would simply add it to the house's feet. 
the, the house. The house is currently 20 feet, two and a half inches from the side property line. That's fine. Or the existing house is. Well, you could simply say the east side of the current house, or the east side of the house currently has a setback of 20 feet, two and a half inches. Okay. The, um, so adding after the zoning ordinance section 19-4-3A requires the side set back to be 25 feet. The east side of the house um, currently is set back 20 feet, two and a half inches from period. Period. Um, the proposed addition would be 19 feet, 11 inches from the side property line. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, additional findings of fact, the need for a variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions of the neighborhood. Two, the granting of a variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not unreasonably detrimentally affect the use or market value of the abutting properties. Three, the practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. Four, no other feasible alternative to a variance is available to the petitioner. Five, the granting of a variance will not unreasonably adversely affect the natural environment. And six, the property is not located in whole or in part within shoreland areas as described in Title 38, Section 435. Um, and then um, one final finding. Uh, there is no substantial departure from the intent of the ordinance and a literal enforcement of the ordinance would cause a practical difficulty as defined by 30 AM RSA section 4353 4C. Um, all in favor? I have nothing. Thank you. Thank you guys very much. Appreciate it. Um, I'm ready to adjourn. I want to offer a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right.